Fei Pinying Jiang. Chapter 50 Gift At the Western Mountain Camp, after Li Chen had met with an official from the Ministry of War and handed over the soldiers and military rations, then he received an imperial edict sent from Ji Han Song. The imperial edict ordered Prince Chun to return to the imperial palace the next day. The main gates of the capital would be open and both the civil and military officials would come to receive the triumphant army. Furthermore, Prince Chun would be allowed to ride a horse into the palace, and would be bestowed a purple four-claw python robe. Li Chen's expression was neutral. Not a trace of emotion could be seen from it. After receiving the imperial edict, he rose to his feet. Smiling, he said, Thank you for the trouble, Sir Ji. At the start, Ji Hansong had thought the emperor wanted him to deliver the imperial edict to warn the prince. Who would have known that the prince would actually achieve a meritorious deed unmatched in history? The emperor had given him the honor of delivering the decree, so at present, Ji Hansong felt extremely pleased with his position. Bowing with a smile, he said, How could one dare to use the word trouble to describe this? That this humble official could deliver this decree is this humble official's fortune. Your Highness has worked hard all along. Tonight, this humble official prepared a small feast. Hopefully your Highness would like it. Li Chen lightly smiled. There's no need for that. This prince caught a cold on the way back and cannot eat meat or drink alcohol. Today, it's fine if Sir Ji and everyone enjoy yourselves to the fullest. Shock collided into Ji Han Song. He feared he had said something wrong. Once again, Li Chen faintly smiled. Imperial lecturer Ji achieved a great merit in Zenyuan country. It's evident that Sir Ji instructed him well. In the future, after this prince returns to the capital, this prince will invite you and your family to drink a few cups of alcohol at my estate. Ji Han Song rushed to say, this humble official dares not accept the honor, dares not accept the honor. Meanwhile, Chi Yunruo started to pack up their tent. When Li Chen entered the tent, Chi Yunruo said, Curious, why is your honored self not attending the feast? Li Chen's countenance didn't look good. In a flash, his heart dropped. Was there something bad in His Majesty's imperial edict? Did His Majesty reprimand you? Li Chen shook his head as he placed the imperial edict onto the bed. Qi Yunruo stole quick glances at it. His forehead gradually wrinkled. In this dynasty, only the imperial clan members whom the emperor approved could wear anything with dragons or pythons on it. The most noble robe those of different surnames and of the duke rank could wear was a Kailan robe. While it's true that princes of the first rank could wear four-clawed dragon robes, Typically a four-clawed dragon robe was too honorable, and would be avoided. In these past few decades, normally only the crown prince wore a four-clawed python robe, because the color purple was a color also worn by the emperor. The other imperial clan members would always avoid wearing purple. The emperor's other gifts, the fact that the civil and military officials would receive him, and the fact that he could ride a horse into the imperial palace perhaps were extremely honorable bestowments but receiving them all at once was excessively respectable. Qi Yunruo looked at Li Chen, whose expression proved neutral. Complicated emotions rose in his heart. The prince would have a triumphant return. Was the emperor not happy about it? What are you thinking about? asked Li Chen. Qi Yunruo's worry was evident on his face. Hesitatingly and with voice growing softer with each word, he said, could it be that His Majesty worries your honored self's great merits would threaten him? Li Chen couldn't help but burst into laughter. Shocked, Qi Yunruo looked at him. Then, Li Chen pulled him into his arms. A smile graced his lips. So, your thoughts traveled there. So it's not this. Qi Yunruo blinked and carefully asked. Li Chen's countenance gradually became tranquil. He glanced sideways at the bright yellow imperial edict on the bed and said with a neutral tone, Imperial Father is merely warning me to not be complacent after an outstanding military service. Qi Yunruo exclaimed, How could this happen? Not caring the slightest, Li Chen said, Actually, since long ago, I've predicted this. 
mm. A light chuckle escaped from Li Chen's lips but that chuckle carried bitterness. Back when third brother had asked to lead troops to war, Imperial father not only refused him but also scolded him an earful. Besides the fact that third brother didn't have much ability, there was also the fact that military merit was very important to those princes who stayed in the capital and associated with the civil officials. In one step, they would stand out among the other brothers who worked in regular government departments. Originally, when I had requested to head to the northwest, I said I was willing to go as a commander of a hundred. Which meant I would not show off with military achievements. Who knew my reputation would become so prominent in the northwest, that I would achieve a grand meritorious deed. Imperial father is warning me to not forget my original intention. Sadness filled Qi Yunruo's heart. Li Chen shook his head. At the outset, I didn't go to the Northwest with thoughts of anything beside helping. It didn't matter if I gained any achievements or not. Qi Yunruo said resolutely, but because of your contributions, the civilians in the Northwest will remember you. They will remember the army of 100,000 troops. And I will also remember it. No one can erase these contributions. Li Chen's gaze fell upon Qi Yunruo and his smile returned to his face. M.M. Early the next morning, Li Chen led 500 soldiers to the capital. The civil and military officials lined up neatly on two sides of Zheng Yang Gate, the main gate. It was already spring that day but the wines still made people shiver. Li Chen slightly frowned as he brought his people inside the city walls. Among the crowd of civil and military officials, the person with the most noble identity was eldest prince, Prince Jing. From far away, Prince Jing had already smiled and said, This elder brother came to personally receive you. Li Chen hurried to climb down his horse. Thank you, eldest brother. Younger brother has no virtue or ability, yet has your honored self to receive me. Prince Jing, who stood at the back, said, Imperial father personally sent out the imperial decree that the civil and military officials must come here to receive you. Naturally, us brothers would not stay in the palace to wait for your return. You accumulated many contributions, whereas we do not have that ability. As such, we can only walk a bit more and escort you back to the palace. Prince Yang, Li Su, smiled. Second brother, imperial father and imperial mother have missed your honored self for one year. You returned with great news. Imperial mother will enjoy much glory because of elder brother. Once Prince Yang had finished speaking, Li Chen's smile dimmed. He patted Li Su's shoulder. I, as an elder brother, did not come to your new estate or your wedding. I did not even personally send you gifts for those two big events. After returning to the capital, I will make it up to you. Li Su said, then younger brother would not be overly polite with second brother. This time, imperial father has bestowed second brother many things. Just in second brother's estate, when my third niece was born, imperial father bestowed more than ten chests of treasure. As Li Chen and his brothers entered the city, they laughed. What kind of uncle are you? You'd even covet your own niece's things. Chi Nikan gave birth to another daughter before the end of the year. At present, she did not have a name yet. Li Chen felt somewhat disappointed. He was already twenty-two yet still did not have a legitimate son. Faintly, Prince Jing arched a brow. He had three sons and four daughters, but they were all from his side consorts. Recently, Princess Consort Jing finally conceived. Experienced old imperial physicians and midwives all said that there was an 80% chance it would be a son. That Prince Qing and Princess Consort Qing were incompatible was not a secret. Prince Qing loved swords, horses, and bows and arrows. Unfortunately, so did his Princess Consort since her youth. Whenever an argument sparked between them, it would directly lead to fighting. Prince Qing had even once slapped Princess Consort Qing, and she ran to the palace to tell noble consort Yuan what occurred, throwing noble consort Yuan under pressure. However, the relationship between Prince Yang and Princess Consort Yang was harmonious. He had yet to take on a secondary consort. Every day, 
Princess Consort Yang had on a gentle, beautiful, and sweet smile. The civil and military officials and the soldiers returned to the capital in a grandiose manner. The civilians knelt on the sides of the road to welcome them. Looking at his nearby brothers, Li Chen frowned inwardly. Long live your highness. Your highness has achieved great service for our great Kong. Your highness contributions will be remembered for all time. This one will kowtow for your highness. Li Chen looked at the deeply grateful civilians kneeling at the side of the road, a smile on his face. However, he knew such a thing was adverse for him. It was uncertain which of his brothers schemed to have civilians praise his contributions without restraint in public. Prince Jing smiled. Second brother not only defended our great state of Kang's territory but also caused the Jiang, who have caused trouble in our central plains for centuries, to be absorbed into our domain. No wonder the civilians are grateful and respectful. Prince Qing's countenance grew worse and worse. Only Li Su's expression did not change. After they had entered the palace, he said, second brother should kowtow and salute to imperial father now. Younger brother will meet with imperial mother first, and inform her that second brother returned safe and sound. I've troubled fourth brother. We're full-blooded brothers, said Li Su. There's no need to say that. Prince Jing and Prince Qing took the initiative to sit. Li Chen left for the palace of peaceful protection. The emperor was waiting in the inner chamber for him. The interior supervision eunuch Huangling respectfully said, Your Highness, His Majesty has been waiting a long time for you. Thank you, Gong Gong, said Li Chen as he entered the room. He caught sight of the emperor sitting in bed with his legs crossed. He knelt from far away, voice thick with emotion as he said, Sun official was unfilial. Sun official has returned. The emperor sighed. Come closer. Give imperial father a better look. Li Chen walked over on his knees. The emperor wiped his face with a handkerchief. Us father and son have not met for a year. Whenever a banquet occurs in the palace and we see that your seat is empty, sadness fills our heart. You have achieved a great merit, yet time and time again enter dangerous situations. We read the reports from the Northwest every day, and feel afraid each time. Li Chen kowtowed. That son official has caused Imperial Father and Imperial Mother to worry about my health is extremely unfilial of me. Son official asks Imperial Father for punishment. The Emperor told Huang Ling to pull him to his feet and had him sit next to the Emperor. But after seeing you return safe and sound, we no longer think of those things. What kind of reward do you want? Li Chen's heart chilled. He said, Sun official is unwilling to accept any reward and only wants imperial father and imperial mother to be healthy. The emperor no longer continued that topic. Instead, he said, Go visit your grandmother. Li Chen asked in a soft voice, Is grandmother doing well? Take a look yourself. Your grandmother was the person who missed you the most. The emperor's gaze held some regret. Starting many years ago, he and his mother had become more and more distant. Now, it was very difficult to be as close again. Understood. In front of the Palace of Merciful Peace, Li Chen hesitated from going in. He obviously had wanted to see his grandmother for many years, yet now, he didn't know how to face her. Slowly, the doors to the Palace of Merciful Peace opened. A low-ranked palace maid said, Your Highness, Her Majesty the Empress Dowager has waited for you for long. With a trace of uncertainty to his features, he stepped foot within the palace without pause. Empress Dowager Lan sat on a couch, smiling at him. In a flash, Li Chen felt as if he had returned to the past. When he had still lived in the Palace of Merciful Peace, and returned after studying or practicing martial arts, Grandmother had also sat in that spot or leisurely read. Or had prepared pastries, waiting for him to eat them. Grandmother. The soldiers without enough contributions to enter the palace and participate in the banquet would return home and reunite with their families. However, Chi Yunruo did not return to Prince Chun's estate. Rather, he decided to explore the capital since it was such a fine day. 
While the civilians had greeted Prince Chun and his men as they had returned to the capital, Chi Yunruo stood at the side of the road, watching them from not too far away. After Prince Chun's chariot passed by, Chi Yunruo looked at the civilians who were helping each other off the ground, expression tainted with worry. Today, the temple fair of the 15th of the month was being held. Chi Yunruo fell into his thoughts, following the crowd all the way to just outside the Guanyin temple. Young ladies of the boudoir walked around in groups. Elegant young men held folding fans in their hands, graceful in appearance. Roadside vendors and peddlers all called out the names of their products. Married women selected jaw stick candles at the roadside. There were also old women with heads full of white hair, trembling as they told their family members to support them to the Guanyin Temple, sincerely wanting to pray. There were many people walking along the bridge and not many carriages or regular sedans. Chi Yunruo also saw many lightweight sedans lifted by two people, squeezing through the crowd. The porters kept saying excuse me, excuse me. Some people rudely said to others around them, today is the 15th of the second month. Do you think there's not enough people? Although Chi Yunruo had lived in the capital for 16 years, never had he the chance to experience this kind of scene. The social relationships in the marketplace. The turmoil of the world. A bustling atmosphere drifted through the air yet made people feel a serene lingering charm. So, the capital is this big and there are this many people. The capital is very interesting. Chi Yunruo couldn't help but smile. He entered the temple. In the courtyard, there was a Buddhist monk who explained the inscribed bamboo sticks. There was a booth that sold blessed lucky items. Chi Yunruo entered the main hall. However, he did not kneel to pray. Rather, he placed two silver pieces into the donation box. A married woman who was kneeling in prayer glanced at him. Chi Yunruo met her gaze. In a flash, he felt slightly odd. This woman was in her forties, wearing a dark yellow loose coat. She wore a long sash around her waist, a sapphire dangling from it. And a full set of flowing clouds Dianqui jewelry. Because Chi Yunruo used to manage the ledger for Prince Chun's estate, just one glance and he could tell that everything this woman wore was expensive. Just her Dianqui jewelry would cost hundreds of silver ingots. However, this woman seemed very subdued. The little servant girl by her side was ugly and petite. A look, and it was clear she did not work for a renowned family. The makeup of the woman was also too garish. Even the members of a merchant family wouldn't draw such thin brows or apply such bright red lipstick. However, she actually looked good. Her attitude was calm, refined and beautiful. Chi Yunruo blinked. He realized that, other than that servant girl, there was no one else around that woman. The other women would rather wait from afar for her to finish than use the praying mats near her. The ugly servant girl supported the woman to her feet, and the woman smiled as she looked at Chi Yunruo. For some reason, Chi Yunruo found her amiable and smiled as well. But the next moment, after Chi Yunruo had heard someone softly say Fenja House is madam, his whole body went stiff. Li Chen rested his body on Empress Dowager Lan's knees. She said in a soft voice, Yao Er is a decisive person. Her intelligence is not inferior to yours. No matter where she is, she'll be able to live well. But I've promised grandmother before. Empress Dowager Lan smiled. Since I know that Yao Er is living well in the northwest region and that you have returned safe and sound, why would I feel sad? Li Chen fell silent. Empress Dowager Lan's gaze fell upon him. At present, those with ill intentions have appeared. I'm already old and cannot help you with much. However, I want to know this, what does Chen Er want right now? He faced the grandmother he put in high esteem and without hiding anything, he said, Grandson is the eldest legitimate son, has studied essays regarding statecraft and studied civil skills and military strategy. Chenner is not a passive recluse and knows that sometimes, retreating a step would result in falling into the abyss. Chenner intends to be the crown prince. Chi Yunruo and the woman sat in a private booth on the second floor of a tea house. 
The woman said, This one has a surname of Rong. People call me Rong Sunny Ang. He looked at her and said, I should know you. Rong Sunny Ang did not deny it. She peered into Chi Yunruo's eyes, her own gaze carrying a profound nostalgia. A light smile appeared on her lips. At the start, this one was curious. Who knew that after one glance, I would know who you are? Chi Yunruo looked down. Not a word left his lips for a while. Speaking of which, the last time this one and your mother met was seventeen years ago, said Rong Sunny Ang, looking at Chi Yunruo. You resemble her a lot. Chi Yunruo recalled his mother, and felt that they didn't look that much alike. Rong Sunny Ang continued to reminisce. Your eyes are basically the same as hers. Really? Chi Yunruo appeared dazed. Rong Sunny Ang smiled bitterly. Ling Long and I have been together for more than ten years. With just a look at your eyes, I'm certain I am not mistaken. Ling Long was adept at reading people. However, she still died because of lying to herself. She, Chi Yunruo looked at Rong Sunny Ang, impatient. What do you know? Why did she die? But Rong Sunny Ang went quiet. A good while later, she sighed. It's best if one doesn't know anything. Then one could live well. Chi Yunruo fell silent for a long time. Then asked, it's because Chi Suxiao betrayed her, right? Correct. Once Chi Yunying returned to his household, Chi Suxiao whipped him over twenty times before punishing him to kneel in the ancestral hall. Chi Suxiao took his time entering the palace for the banquet. Fuming with rage through gritted teeth, he said, This evil creature. Born to anger me to death. Today, Chi Yunchen was off duty. He was also an upright and courageous man. But because his status as the eldest legitimate son restrained him, he could never be as willful and rash as Chi Yunying. He could only say consolingly, Father, second brother is in the prime of his youth. It is normal for him to make mistakes. If father is patient when teaching him, second brother will definitely be corrected. Chi Suxiao slapped the table hard. It was obvious he was flustered and exasperated. What do you know? Our Chi family cannot have any connection with the military right now. The more contributions this evil creature accumulates, the more worried I am. Doubtful, Chi Yunchen asked, Why, father? Chi Suxiao took a deep breath and said unenthusiastically, The Chi family and the Imperial clan have a gamble going on. We've already lost. Since we lost, we must carefully examine the circumstances. Chi Yunruo and Li Chen returned to the Prince Chun's estate almost at the same time. To be precise, Chi Yunruo waited for Li Chen outside the estate to enter together. The scent of alcohol still clung to Li Chen. Chi Yunruo was also exhausted. Waving, Li Chen said, respects can be paid tomorrow. Su Ji replied, this slave understands. In Ink Lotus Courtyard, the two soaked in hot water to relieve their fatigue. Chi Yunruo leaned his head against the edge of the tub, staring above in a daze. A hot damp towel covered Li Chen's face. Their tubs were next to each other. Mixed in with the water were calming essential oils. Once the water gradually cooled down, Li Chen asked, Were you tired today? Chi Yunruo absent-mindedly grunted his acknowledgement. A smile spread across Li Chen's lips. He resumed relaxing with his eyes closed. Then, Chi Yunruo felt he had ignored the prince. A hint of awkwardness appeared in his expression. He rose to his feet in the tub. Did your highness meet with Empress Dowager Lan today? Still smiling, Li Chen said, Grandmother is in good health. Not long after, Chi Yunruo climbed out of the tub. Wiped away the water on his body and draped a white inner garment over himself. Afterward, he picked up a towel to wipe dry Li Chen's body. The two lay down in bed. Once they were drowsy, Li Chen said, You have to wake up early tomorrow. Why? Chi Yunruo couldn't even open his eyes. Because, said Li Chen, I'll be sending you a gift. You'll receive it tomorrow. 
End Chapter Fei Pinying Jiang Chapter 51 Adjutant Although the celebration of their heroic deeds had occurred yesterday, the heroes would be commended for their military contributions on the current day, promotion being the main feature. Li Chen and Zhao Weidu's lengthy report detailing the accomplishments of anyone who had helped them had long since arrived at the capital. The Ministry of Personnel, the Ministry of Revenue, and the Ministry of War were in charge of this event. Such an immense victory was the greatest accomplishment in the great state of Kong for many, many years. Although some were unhappy, the Emperor intended to reward the troops generously and reprimand lightly those involved who had made mistakes. Li Chen had also presented a letter to him from Princess Changping, Li Yao. After the Emperor had read it, he fell silent for a good while. Following that, he did as Li Yao wanted, bestowing a hundred artisans to help Prince Buahgur of the first rank build a palace. He bestowed antiques, calligraphy, paintings, precious stones, and treasures. Furthermore, the emperor dispatched tens of academicians to teach the Qiang nobility. Additionally, the emperor adopted Li Yao's personal maidservant as a daughter, bestowing her the title of Princess Zhuangjing of the third rank. In addition, most of the soldiers in the army were rewarded. Zhao Weidu was promoted to a second rank defender general for protecting the northwest region. His tacticians and deputy generals were recompensed as well. Marquis Wuding's heir, Su Yuan, was conferred the title of Conquest Deputy General. He was still stationed in the Western Mountain Camp. Since Li Chen was already a prince of the first rank, he could not be promoted anymore. In the future, he would continue to supervise the Ministry of Revenue and would also be invited to official discussions in the Ministry of War. He was bestowed 500 kilograms of silver and 15 kilograms of gold. Not to mention, in the future his two daughters would be conferred princesses of the first rank. More specifically, his second daughter Yan would be Princess Shunjia and his third daughter would be Princess Rujia. However, there existed a rumor, the emperor was discontent with Princess Consort Chun and wanted to bestow Prince Chun another secondary consort. The two secondary consorts of Prince Chun had both given birth to sons, and hailed from scholarly backgrounds. Additionally, the emperor seemed to be interested in bestowing Zhao Weidu's 16-year-old eldest daughter to Prince Chun. The rules and regulations came from the imperial household. As such, they could change such rules however and whenever they wanted. Although Li Chen's inner courtyard already had the maximum amount of secondary consorts, no one dared to say anything. Not to mention, who knew how many civil and military officials were rushing to form connections with this Prince Chun? who was basking in the limelight. Even if their daughters couldn't receive proper statuses, even if they were to become tertiary consorts or even normal concubines, perhaps in the future, there would be a tremendous change. Ever since the Empress Dowager had come out of seclusion, she had invited the wives of the nobility and high-ranking officials to chat time and time again. Some thought of things they should not have and brought their daughters and granddaughters to pay respects to the Empress Dowager. The Qi Yunruo who was ignorant of all this sat in a chair, dazed. Mind blank as he stared at the person before him, his expression stiff. The official from the Ministry of Personnel laughed. This humble official's side received a letter from His Highness Prince Chun one month ago. The official documents, uniform and seal have been prepared long in advance. The adjutant of a prince of the first rank is a sixth rank civil official. An egret is embroidered onto the official robe. Sir can try it on now. If there needs to be any adjustments, have the subordinates of the Ministry of Rights do so. Suji had known about this matter since long ago and thus, was not the slightest bit surprised. He bowed and said to Chi Yunruo, Will Sir try it on? Oh. All right. Chi Yunruo rose to his feet. He entered the inner chamber. Once he was before the mirror, two maidservants helped him put on the red upper outer garment and the lower garment that covered his knees. They helped him into a pair of white socks and black boots. Then they put on a belt for him and attached a girdle tassel to it. He had yet to put his hair up, so he could not wear the hat yet. The maidservant Luxuan clapped and said, 
Sir truly looks spirited right now. Chi Yunruo's brain slowly started to work again. Distractedly he asked, really? Luxuan smiled. Truly. The sight gives off the might of an official. In the future, Sir will manage the accounts of the whole estate and associate with other officials in his highness stead. We will be troubling your honored self a lot from now on. Su Ji had always been the one managing the outside affairs of the estate. Naturally, he knew the unspoken customs among officials. He gave the official from the Ministry of Personnel a large red packet and also prepared a box of silver pieces. Thank you sir for taking the trouble to come here. Surely the Ministry of Personnel was very busy and spent a lot of time preparing for this matter. May your honored self bring this back and use it to buy you and your peers a meal. I don't dare, I don't dare. We as humble officials dare not neglect what His Highness wants. Su Ji smiled as he escorted that person out. After he returned, he noticed Chi Yunruo seemed somewhat at a loss. The youth said, Eunuch Su Ji. Prince Chun's estate has been established for seven years, said Su Ji. And in those seven years, His Highness was unable to find a suitable person for this position. Young Master Chi should not find this position, that of an adjutant in this prince estate, humble. In the prince estate, apart from His Highness, your position is the highest. When His Highness is not around, you can temporarily hold his authority here. Young Master, think about it. How could His Highness just casually give such an important position to anyone? Su Ji invited him to sit but the pitiful Chi Yunruo didn't dare to do so while dressed in the robes of an official. Flushed with excitement, he pulled down the corners. Su Ji said gently, as an adjutant, you will manage the estate. We also have to follow His Highness instructions and extend Lakeside View House. Apart from where young master sleeps and personal areas, a study and work quarters will be added. The ledger of the prince estate will be placed into your hands. Especially the accounts of the four courts personnel. Regarding those guards with official positions, those guards without official positions, those stewards with ranks, those servants without ranks, your honored self must know all of their responsibilities and how to reward and punish them. Regarding the affairs outside the estate, your honored self must represent His Highness, have contact with the officials, entertain officials in social events, and work with other departments. This slave will give some examples. Every year, the Ministry of Rights would make ceremonial robes and robes meant for the outside for His Highness and the other masters, along with other personal items and accessories. If His Highness wants to alter the estate with any sort of construction, he must get in touch with the Industry Bureau of the Ministry of Works. The Ministry of Revenue pays His Highness a yearly salary. Our Prince Estate has many businesses set up outside. Your honored self must know every detail of the ledger. Must know and manage the annual income of those villages and stores, where the money from those places go and how the money is used. Chi Yunruo nodded. However, his gaze carried confusion on what to do. His Highness. His Highness wants me to take on this official position? But what if I make a mistake? Would someone? Su Ji said, Young Master, do not look down on yourself. The adjutant of every prince estate is someone whom those princes trust the most. Young Master is careful and decisive. Not to mention, you have experienced many things in the Northwest. One cannot get results overnight when starting as an official. Your honored self will gradually learn. If there is anything you don't know, there is still His Highness to help and teach you. Furthermore, this slave knows the more simple things and can offer assistance. If this slave knows it, then this slave will definitely tell you. Chi Yunruo let out a sigh of relief. Since Lakeside View House was to be expanded, Lulan and Yuji brought Chi Yunruo's luggage to Ink Lotus Courtyard. Lulan and Luxuan helped Chi Yunruo put on his hat. He was young, his face was still childish yet wore a red robe. It made others find him very impressive. Right after his hair was arranged, he walked out. Su Ji said, His Highness has returned. For some reason, Chi Yunruo blushed. Then he rushed into the inner chamber. 
Li Chen entered the room and took off his official robes and changed into casual wear. He had caught sight of Qi Yunruo heading for the inner chamber, but did not say anything. A while later, Qi Yunruo came back out. Li Chen examined him from head to toe a few times and smiled. Sir Qi! Your Highness! Li Chen said, come closer so I can take a look. Qi Yunruo took a few steps forward. Li Chen nodded. If you see me outside, what should you do? He was caught in a daze. If you have a petition or memorial for me, you ought to kowtow or give a ceremonious nod, said Li Chen. Although your position is of the sixth rank, you represent the face of Prince Chun's estate. You need not perform a full ceremony of greeting to the other officials. Only for the families of dukes, marquises and princes do you bow with your hands folded in front of you in a show of respect. Qi Yunruo lifted up the ends of his official robe and knelt. He placed his hands on the floor and rested his forehead on them. A moment later, he raised his upper body and looked at Li Chen. A smile spread across Li Chen's lips. No need to be so ceremonious. Qi Yunruo stood. Beckoning. Li Chen said, Little Chi, come here. Gaze gentle, he helped the youth adjust his belt. Chi Yunruo looked at him, his heart that had been somewhat in a jumble started calming bit by bit. Once more did Li Chen smile. You did very well. Back in Count Ziang's estate, Chi Yunruo had studied etiquette. There was bound to be a time when he had to meet people. Back then, Granny Kong stood at the side with a bitter expression and a ruler in her hand, teaching him customs and pieces of etiquette one at a time. Li Chen waved and dismissed everyone. Then he pulled Little Chi to sit by his side, drinking tea as his gaze fell upon him. Nervousness brushed his Chi Yunro's heart. He asked, Your Highness, I'm still a little worried. If I make a mistake, you have Su Ji to help you in the estate, and me to help you outside. Not a word left Qi Yunruo's lips at that. Li Chen continued, I've thought about this matter for a long time. Little Qi, you shouldn't waste your time in such a small courtyard. I want to give you a new identity. And I need someone that I can trust and have confidence in to represent me in public. Qi Yunruo's nervous heart finally grew serene. A smile graced his lips. Your Highness, I know what your honored self means. Actually, I am very happy. I've always wanted to help your honored self but I don't have much of an education. I'm afraid that I will embarrass you if I go outside. Proudly, Li Chen said, if the people from my estate make an appearance, that's already giving others honor and glory. Li Chen then told him to stand again. He took in the appearance of Qi Yunruo in the robes of an official. Obediently, Qi Yunruo turned in place. Near whisper, Li Chen said, that Egret will one day become a silver pheasant. The adjutant of a crown prince's estate was a fifth-rank official. A magnificent goal sprung in Qi Yunruo's heart. If that day comes, even if you make me wear robes with a red-crowned crane, I'd still wear it. Li Chen burst out laughing. So little Qi is actually this ambitious. Although the emperor did not want for those who made mistakes to be punished too harshly, Someone like Si De, who dared to collude with outside enemies and plot the death of a first-ranked prince, would definitely be killed. His subordinates were all kept in custody. Dong Cheng was someone who had personally brought the spies from Zenyuan country into the military encampment. His punishment would be severe. After Qi Yunruo heard Li Chen mention this, his heart jumped. He frowned and felt distressed. However, in public, Brother A. Cheng was fully aware that those were spies from an enemy country, that they would cause the prince harm. Yet he still followed Sita's orders. In private, the prince was his most important person. However, he had a friendly relationship with Brother A. Cheng and big sister Yuan Yuan in the past. And he could not erase those precious memories. With indifference, Li Chen said, in the future, Dong Cheng's crime will not implicate his family. This is already a great favor for him. I understand. Your Highness, have the people behind Sita still not been found? 
Li Chen shook his head. No matter what, Sita would not admit to anything. For now, the court did not convict him because Li Chen had yet to uncover any evidence. Your Highness, if you need me to come out as a witness. Li Chen shook his head again. For now, that's unnecessary. Your Highness. Your Highness, knocks sounded on the door. Qi Yunruo rose to his feet and turned to Li Chen. Li Chen asked, what is it? Her Highness the Princess Consort has come to pay respects to your honored self, said Su Ji. Qi Yunruo's expression stiffened. Su Ji added, Her Highness also brought the little princess along. Although the court did not officially confer her a title, the decree had already been given. The second young miss and third young miss of Prince Chun's estate were already princesses. Li Chen said, Let the princess consort in. End chapter.